Not everyone knows what a Bothy Ballad is. What does it take to get a Bothy Ballads on the map? Uh, yeah, Slap and I, a 4-4 on the art, get a fucking tick drums. I was joking with my friends, the formula that everyone was hitting was to take club music and infuse traditional music with club music. We were laughing so much, but then we, then we started to take it seriously because it actually sounded good, that's the thing. And that's, that's where the lines blur, because it's like, we did it for a laugh, but we also enjoy it. We just got a massive agricultural boner over this music. This seems an old Bothy classic, and Volakiri Muirk, and OG. And OG. Why? People uh, hit, hitting us up or just leaving comments on it, just being like, oh yeah, this is like, you know, this is the energy from back home that I want. It was really, it that. was, yeah, really positive. When they reach out, you're suddenly like, fuck, like this has global appeal. Bothy Ballads came to be um, as, a, as a means of, what would you say, expression, or as a way of coping with the hard work on the fields in the Northeast. Well, when's the first time we heard a Bothy ballad? In the womb? Yeah, a Bothy is a rudimentary dwelling at the edge of agricultural land. This is where the workers would sleep and... Typically unmarried young men. And spend time singing, uh, commiserating about like how shy it is, just working all the time. Your ears getting skilt by the farmer, and then you you fucking you go you go straight into the bothy, mic lined <laughs> up studio, spit out the bar, spit out the pain, spit out the fucking lyrics. DJ, DJ, DJ. Yeah, it's cool. Like like learning about that stuff and realizing that that Aberdeenshire has got a deeper musical history than say most other spots in Scotland. Obviously, like the northeast musical culture is something that's ingrained in us, and the. The bass music culture is something that we both chose to, you know, to kind of involve ourselves in. Yeah, because we got made to sing them. Because when you start out, right, you, you do it at school, dancing and all that, and it's like, it's embarrassing because you're forced to do it. You're forced to partake in your own culture. When it comes to actually doing it of your own accord, you remember it all because you're like, oh, thanks for that. I mean, having culture literally like beaten into you, the assembly after assembly, uh, you know, at school, it does have an effect. But then as soon as you do something that they don't like with it, they're like, don't know about that, you know. Like, we're not from any of that world, so we don't really have to give a shit. Whereas like anyone in the traditional music scene, they seem really forced to put forward this image of what is like the idealized uh, Northeast, the idealized grand Irish piano. Irish dragoons come marching down through Fifeo. And a captain's fan in love, we a very bonny lass, and her name... I think I've established myself as quite a traddy folk singer. So traditionally, bothy ballads were sung unaccompanied. Um, that was the traditional style. I once had a comment on Facebook saying, that piano's a gimmick, you should just be singing that unaccompanied. Well, if someone has an issue with me playing piano, then they've got something else coming if they listen to the boys. I came across the bothy bass thing on Instagram. I was like, this is hilarious. I got it immediately. You hear them, you go, oh, I, I knew that because I used to sing it or my granny used to sing it to me. It's not innovation versus tradition. It's just this carrying stream of, we need to move it forward. Like people will be pissed off. But the thing is, is in 50 years time, that's not going to be the target audience. They'll be lang deed in a wa. And it's quite a, quite a beautiful thing to pass doing songs for a generation to another, but the way to do that is to engage younger audiences. The guys do it very well. Iona, when she got in touch with us first and just started like replying to things on Instagram and all that, like heard from her and like obviously knew she was from a very traditional background. For her to co-sign that was, was decent. The original mix that we did was based on a competition that we put out to gather musical productions that are either based around or sample from Bothy ballads, but also other Scottish music. We're all featuring with Bothy classics. If the Brazilians can get loudy with Bailey funk, it's to say that we kind of remix our classics for the young loons and quines for more than day. Boom, hot man. But then we had to kind of close it back in again because we opened up to whole Scotland. We realised this was the problem in the first place: was that it just got kind of flooded with. Uh, what you'd call Keltronica, 
But we're not like the first people to come along and be like, Scottish music, electronic music. <laughs> that was the joke in the first place where like it's easy, like basically we would get overwhelmed by stuff that was like Celtic reinterpretations. We were like, we just went scalping bangers. Kaylee music, you can. Bothy bass, bothy ballads. Moo! How'd you fucking wish, man? Aye, so for never we're needing folk to send in tunes and that, we're expecting them, they'll give a wee, tuck it, all bothy classics, give them a, a wee fucking dicked up, get them nice and clean, and then we fucking slap in some tech drums, hoorah bass, muckle compression, get us sounding correct, you can. Right, you ready to get that slap at drums, man? Aye. Right. Ready? Aye. <laughs> Four less. Semi regularly, had folk ask, like, are you, are, are you serious? Are you taking a piss? Like, one of my mates the other day, like, one of our pals from London, he was asking, he was like, I don't know, how, you know, whether I should take this seriously or not. And I was like, bit of both, man. Mate, the people who originally made the music made it for a laugh and made, made it, it to, to cheer themselves up. Yeah, cheer themselves up. We're proud of where we come from, we're proud of being Aberdonian. I mean, Aberdeen Manny said it. So he was like, oh, I'm glad that the youngins are, are getting into it through this. Hi, Instagram. Iberdeen money here. Iberdeen money here. Iberdeen money here. Feed the men. Ken, a lot of folk will uh, Ken, look at my Instagram posts and they really like it because it's how they're, they're dar, they're grunny speaks, Ken. I like fit their DN so much because they're blending, Ken. That's, that's fit culture is, that's how it grows, Ken. Because uh, they're blending, Ken, new bang and techno tunes we all, Ken, Doric songs and that. It's important to keep your culture, is it? Because uh, if you don't keep it, it's not going to be here on on him here. So uh, you have to be proud of it. Well, it's important not to take things too seriously because things aren't as serious, only way are they, Ken? Life's just a bit of a, a, bit of a laugh. Our perception of the Northeast culture is that it's funny. Like it's, it doesn't take itself too seriously because anywhere where you're mutually unintelligible to a fellow English speaking person, um, yeah, you, you have to be able to poke fun at yourself. You know, there's a few people here and there that take traditional stuff a bit too seriously to the point that it, like, they don't realize that they're the person making this shit uncool by doing so. It's now, this might have been like 200 years ago that like folk were mostly chatting about plue and neeps and all that. It's like, yeah, to, the, to your average person, that's not a relatable experience. But flash cars and like all that shit is not a relatable experience. Penthouses and, and you know, fucking popping bottles and that. So yeah, like you could sing a, sing a boot on a hen and enjoy on a hen. The fact that we're allowed to enjoy it and do what the fuck we want with it, it's our fucking culture, you know what I mean? So we'll... Remix! In, in, in any way we, we see fit, really. So, we can fit fit.